a build parts are going to be. It would be nice if there would also be places where it would be reasonable for someone to unpack the source directly, uh, to the source package while debugging. And, uh, <coughs> so that's why my proposal was USAR slash SRC slash Debian slash hello dash 2.9. Because when you go to US, you do CD, US SRC Debian, have to get source hello, and you get that. Then it's the full version number, maybe. Well, that's not what I have to get source code that you. Right, right now, yeah. But we might want that. Yeah. This is, this is why that was my suggestion, but actually it's true that if we want the debug info to be useful regarding the sources, it's better to have the version, uh, the, the Debian packet revision. Yeah. There. Mm. Because yeah. patches, such a build and part. binary and MUs. Well, they have the same source. Oh, they should, yes. <laughs> Some packages are. Sorry. No. So, to, to, uh, <laughs> this would, just to say one thing, this would this would this would get us on par with Fedora. Yeah, how, where is Fedora? Because I thought Fedora RPM build has predictable build paths. So. Kinda. They use debug edit and all sort of things, but it's USRSRC uh, package name dash version. Oh, okay. Let's do that. Can we? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I just thing. wanted to say that this also has other um, <coughs> things about it that are useful, like build depending on a source package. Mm, yeah. Which we kind of need for Eventually, mm, yes, we things want that it. depend currently depend on dash source binary packages. Yeah. Where, where do dash source binary packages? Do we have a canonical answer for that right now? Where they put their stuff? Or is that kind of I that think it's used as source. I'd have to check, but so we go. GCC dash source. No, GCC, no, Unitools dash source. Try that. Uh, I know that Linux source, well, Linux, Linux, source. Source. Well, Linux source is a bit different because that installs yeah. tarball. Yeah, and GCC source install a tarball. I think the Unitools is unpacked. Okay. Uh, maybe it's a tarball these days again. So anyway, it sounds like there's, there's a range of things that are happening right now. So right? that doesn't just install a tarball, it also installs uh, the RT patch, a single patch for that, and it still installs all the graphics. <coughs> so a canonical build path would standardize these dash source packages and enable them depending on them. I think it would be a mistake for us to try to get into that. Yeah. 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 Thank you. As long as we can, if we say this is what the yeah. reproducible builds are going to see, yeah. fine. And then if people ever want to you know, normalize their stuff that. to that, fine. But, yeah. it would but be I don't think we want to make this know, a We discussed it at that right. month and all agreed. <laughs> well, it, would, it would be useful, but the, but there's always going to be differences, right? Yeah. I mean, should the build path build path actually into a Debian or should it into a single? What does Fedora do? They have distro names. <coughs> well. Typically, RPMs, they have the vendor suffix and the version number. So, so if the version number is full, it will have like a something for Fedora and then RHEL for Red Hat and blah, blah, blah. Um, it does occur to me <laughs> that, um, is it going to be okay to put tildes in there? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find more bugs, but that's fine. Colons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Spaces. We don't allow We're not going to have spaces. <laughs> <laughs> that one I can figure out. Okay. Research. Okay, let's say, so let's say we include the revision, the package revision number. And so what's it, the contents of that? Is that the unpacked thing or the DSC and everything else? Well, under hello 3.12-1, after that, I believe there is slash Debian slash rules, which is executed yeah. to do the build. So it's right. unpacked. Okay. The, the yeah, if you point Debian rules, it's ambiguous, yeah. That makes sense. So well, the, the la latest patch <coughs> I have against DPKG build package will actually, it, so it has a test, uh -huh. and it bails out if you're not in the close to that directory. Or if you have pwd installed, it will like fire up yes, pwd right. automatically and run the build in an environment that simulates that you are in that pwd directory. Mm -hmm. So this is something that, this is a patch that we can push into a git build package or a dpkg build package? Mm -hmm. And 
they will just take advantage of it. Yes. Say. Or like a config option to enable it. And enable it by default. That sounds good to me. I would really support that. I mean, if we, if we find out that it breaks some, like, yeah. If we find out that it breaks some build, then. I mean, eventually we'll have to get it into build DD as build, right? So I have a patch, I have an unsisted patch against as build that will make as build use that. I guess. I guess. Uh, if not, you can't build it yet. But you're just saying it's not necessary. I mean, if it's like you get a package with package double that does not need special care in S group because it just runs well, it, it, it depends on. What did you say it depends on? P word. P word. Yeah. You, you want to probably do you want to no, run just without P word? So, just one thing P root is very limited because it uses P trace and yeah. P trace does not have a level of architecture. And, and, and also, really an upstart will fail to build if it's under a feature. Maybe, and also it will like really slow down, I mean, yeah. not really, but it will slow down the build. It, it interrupts like, in, in the sense, every, every call. Come on. So I have a question which is, is it okay if I eat while dollar? Well, <laughs> yeah, no, so I, I, I don't make, did you make so much noise? Did you bring enough to share? It has a hundred words. Okay. Um, so that's that's one thing that is great. Uh, is, that, is there a patch in the BTS too? No, this for DD, no. So the patches I have not pushed push any packet uh, any patches to DPKG for a while because I have the Because I wanted to have, you know, a lot of trend before going to Glam or with all my little shoulder and being told no, because that's I mean, so the way that I understood Glam work for TPKG is basically that like you submit a patch and that's the witch list, <laughs> and he rewrites your patch and then it gets into TPKG if he's interested in the idea. Uh, that's that's how I've seen things work. So I'd rather I wanted to have. You know, huge number to present to say, okay, this is not a dream. This is something that can happen. If, but we need to to modify the package. So here's the batch. Well, you're not modifying the package. You're modifying that build, that build which is that type of yeah. stuff. But that's essential package. So yeah, it, right. is, it is under Gillen's right. Yeah. Right. So it seems to me like we should get those bug reports submitted to the BTS. Just so that the discussion is out in the open, and if he's going to, if he ends up being obstinate about it, then we say, hey, please, you know, we run it for us. Yeah, and <laughs> and probably say it would be good if it was not just in our um, following up on the patches. Like, if, if, if we make it clear that there are several people who, are, who want this, and if the patches are not acceptable for some reason, then he and should figure out some patches that are applicable. Um, but I'd say we should get the bugs submitted. So that it's so that it's a public discussion. Um, so the other patch against the PKG that has not been submitted uh, is so that's one that is like completely uh, uh, <coughs> usually can be applied. It's the one that sorts the file in the dot dev archives. That one um, is, I believe, like, you know, not contentious at all. I'm, I mean, we started to sort MD5 sums yes. such that they give better. So, yes, same, same kind of, of yeah. thing. So, uh, there's, and there's, there's another patch which, uh, so tar has a minus minus n time option, mm -hmm. which will uh, have, so all members of the uh, archive, they will uh, have the same n time. Mm -hmm. And so how it works right now with the, the experiment we've done is that uh, at the beginning of the of the of the build, uh, it gets the time, mm -hmm. and then you use the same end time everywhere. But if the uh, dev build timestamp environment variable is set, then it will reuse the same timestamp. Mm -hmm. That it will it will it will put that timestamp into the uh, and time option. Why do we not just want this to be always done? 
based on say diabetic uh, change like type yeah. 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 So we would always use the, the time sorry, the timestamp of the change log of the last yeah. change log entry? Yes. yes. Of the sort the timestamp of the source yeah. package. Which yeah. you would say is which has the been DSC, is it signed. Is it in the DSC? Or shall we or shall we uh, use the time of the signature of the DSC? No, that's too late. Too late? Yeah. Because you only saw that after it's built. Oh, you mean signing the Debian.tar.gz as well? No, that's compliance. It's too late because it's not signed during the build. Well, you build the source package first, and then we you So we need to build the situation. Yeah, we need an option that won't give a minus. Uh, in the duplication build package, I'm not going to build this whole thing. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I would, I would think it's the entry of the change log. Yeah. The last entry yeah. of the change log. Yeah. So this is a patch okay. to a D package or a patch to Tar? Because Tar already works. Dash source. Uh, DPKG dash, no, um, you know, well, what, what's something in DPKG, but <laughs> <laughs> it's really close to the patch that I already have. Build there, isn't it? Yeah. Build there, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 the package build there. D package for there. I don't know, but it's... Well, it's already yeah. half written. It's only like so. Right now, I'm using like time to get the initial timestamp. So we'll be just passing the event change log. And so it's uh, but I'd rather not do that in C though. Or maybe that's already something. Well, okay. I think the dead package stuff, the dev stuff is built. Is it? Yeah, I thought it was for No, not not all of it. So, okay. DPKG build package is. But the thing that builds the actual dot dev is not. Uh, maybe dev yeah, yeah. Well, maybe the package dev. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, I'm I'm willing to follow up on that patch and change what I've already written because I, I know it right now and and, uh, and, and yeah. <coughs> Would you plan to pass that change log value through as an environment variable? Or just have the package dev calculator? No, it would be the last entry of the change log. So right. It wouldn't need to be present during the like. This is for source build, right? This is not for my. This no, this is for source build. But it doesn't need to be present during the actual build process. I don't yes, understand what you're talking about. It does because you're building a dev. So yeah. what what happens is that when you do when you build a, a dev, right. you need to fetch the version. So how right. right. Where do you find the versions? That's right. in Zbian slash change log. So what, what we're saying is that we're going to take the timestamp in the version. But the execution does depend on this. It doesn't depend on being running from the particular directory. You can tell it pack up this directory and go pack up this directory of go to the data that and this into the control. And there's no assumption that you're in in the uh, the top level of the source directory when you run it. Oh. But we can have if you get your build package test that as yeah, an environment variable. Yeah. Is yeah. that reasonable? Because that's close to what I already have. So. Do you want to export that? Do you want to export that environment variable to any of rules also? Do you need it? They would be. It would be. Yeah. Can Debian is it okay for Debian rules to rely on that environment variable? Your call can only contribute for it with the charge Cool. Okay. Um, <coughs> so the timestamp stuff. Um, right, this is one place where the timestamps show up. And all of the, yeah, there are many other places. Yeah, but yeah, what, but so, but I really want to focus this discussion on the framework first. Okay. Because if the .dev file themselves are not reproducible, then you know what's inside right. is right. less meaningful. I remember the little conversation a year ago about the timestamp in the R archive on the outside. Did that get resolved? So there's so that's okay. We can so that's one of one of the things uh, that was during the experiment we we built in Autos with a uh, uh, minus minus uh, enable deterministic archives, which actually make the option that you just showed the default one. 
So, so, but with that, yeah. but but we could also just be passing that to R. Right? That means changing a lot of things. Uh, no, it's it's that's uh, LD use IR. Uh, GCC use AR. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so we about the details. No, so you're right. saying switch the default uh, option in the details. So we could let Docker to switch the option in the details. Can anybody think about anything good great if you like? I don't understand why it's on the default. <laughs> Can anybody <laughs> not? <laughs> what, what, what's the difference between the two modes? Like, what's non-deterministic about it? So when adding file in the archive index, use zero for all. It will use zero for UID, GID, timestamps, and use consistent file mode for all files. Oh. So um, if you do that and people are doing backups, they're going to be pissed. Right, so, so if you're using... No. <coughs> Makes of all doing wow. makes of all having dependencies on oh, uh, yes. members of AR archives. So that would mean that the tough bit. So it, that will depend on the timestamps there being what what it is. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you think we we can't on that on the default because of that? That will break. Yeah. It'll break. Makes timestamp break. I mean, it's a, horrible, it's, a, it's a horrible thing I have that's, that let's use that might be more because it doesn't work with uh, parallel build, for example. Um, but that's cool. it is, uh, can we uh, sorry for this a little bit? I was trying to make it so I could read it. Yeah. But <coughs> is there so that's, an environment that's, variable we can... So that's not a good use if we, we, we can't. What about the environment variable? That should help. Oh, that would mean hashing bin itself? Yeah. We could do that. Maybe. But then you you have the same problem that we're building uh, we're running uh, presumably the end. Is the intent for deterministic builds to be applied applicable to all packages in Debian? Because if that's the case then we have some of these. Some of these packages are going to be using uh, as part of the system. The uh, uh, makes support for uh, updating the contacts and if there are files. So, so you can always use the opposite option. It's a common Yeah, we can. You can pass. You can pass U or pass D to My, um, lower case D. I believe. No, it's no, it's big D and big U are the two. Okay. Options. So, can we change whatever part calls R to pass D? But to R. But it sounds like we're talking about two separate uses of R here. One is in building the Debian binary package, yeah. where it sounds like no, R, R, is, no, R is not used. Yeah. And one is in building actual libraries, where it is possible that, that the make file time sharing cracking feature is in use in the build process of those actual libraries, and so we can't change it there. But I believe in, I believe these I are can change it there. Okay. But so the other question is, can we can we write an R processor that strips? Right. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Put that put that in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> sure. So I mean, it's all about <laughs> like unpacking one R and giving the or like the other like the capital option to the next. Yeah. Yeah. So stripping R and GZ, right? Because there, there was this other thing about can, uh, you, can we strip the. the yeah. yeah. I've remarked about that. I'm, I spent a little bit of time last night working on, uh, working with Drew Fisher, I think his name, on Datadoc comments. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, Drew and I spent a moment yesterday working on Javadoc comments and trying to thread the command for Javadoc that was able to store the timestamps through the Maven so on chain <coughs> to Javadoc. And TLDR is an enormous pain, and I've concluded that it's not worth bothering and stripping stuff is probably better. Should we have a DH 
the straight non-deterministic thing and yeah, yeah, get yeah, everything there. That's Strip non-determinism. Non-DR. Or remove non-DR. DH determinize. That would result in a, a result sooner. Yeah. yeah. Like them going through all the threads and build systems. Yeah. Now I totally agree with that. Sure. Yeah. Having spent the time already to try to do it. But it would be yeah. cool to also get all of those things. Yeah, but you know what? This would also be a place to collect all of those things. Right? Yeah. The source code for this would be a place to collect a to do list of a to do list. Yeah. I, and you could say, oh, this is you know, this is a Java doc file, let's go fix Java. <coughs> It, is it better for them to go in one task like this or in the respective like DH Java helper? We already um, have like the, the other ones, DH Python. We already have DH fixed permissions, which is a little bit like one. So I think it's separate. I think it should be global because, for instance, Java uses jar, which is just zip, and mm -hmm. so everyone who uses zip format would benefit from making that non terminus instead of making it Java specific. I agree with so that. Does, um, but like to construct the arguments that produce the jar itself uh, is something that is only known to the sure. So, so you build so the jar and then you do a second pass on the jar to clean it up. So oh okay. So, so, so clean up. But it's also possible, right, that some packages right. will have files in them that are weird nested crazy shit that we don't yeah. know what to do with. Jar and so jar. Yes. So this so this command yeah, this dh strip non determinism probably needs to look in the Debian directory and say oh. This file is processed differently with this different. Well, if package, you know, fringe packages Don't. can do fringe things. Yeah. That's yeah. the flexibility of the Debian rules. <coughs> but we need to, if we have solution for 95% or 99%. Yeah, Helper even has a mechanism for package build systems to say, I want to handle this particular thing differently. Yeah. Yeah. So we can make strip non deterministic a phase that, you know, DH Python or whatever it is knows how to over it. Okay. Um, I also have AR and ZIP yeah. and uh, and R. Uh, good. That, that was so. That was inside. Uh, to get back outside, if that's okay. Uh, one question that is not solved yet is where do we record the the build environment? Uh, Michael is <coughs> inside the dot changes. Uh, but for example, I so I've sent I've, I had a couple of email exchange with uh, the author of a package called DH Build Info, which basically does the job we want. It records the build environment, all the packages, but it's still and the version. But currently, it's all in the dev. But you also told me like, okay. yeah, I would like to have this actually. It should be done at the GPKG level. But he was arguing that the file he was producing should be a separate file. Like next to the changes file. Next to the changes file, maybe. I was. Uh, what's the trade-off? Yeah, that's what I. Well, the archive <coughs> track files next to the changes file. Where do they go in the archive? Well, now they get thrown out. As yeah, so can, I just tried to do that. They get thrown away. Yeah. <laughs> of rejection. That's less than a Yeah. Determinism not part of easy inside of that. That's not that tar, that tar whatever. Well, so there's um, the R A R next to the top level has data dot and control dot yeah. build info dot That's that's no because you do a build of multiple binaries from the same source, so it's making information. Yeah, it's, about this, it's a source package thing. But the good thing we're using on dot changes. No, it's, no, it's a, a binary. It's, it's an it's source. Or it's, or it's a build, build thing. thing. It's a which is the change file. But it's, going, but it's going to associate with each architecture that it builds on, right? Yeah. Yes. So the answer today is going to be different on the different shell I think it belongs better better in the binary package than elsewhere, although for, it's not clear the binary package currently. One of the good things we've done. separate to the change file now. Because you have to this changes. Because the change file should be ranked. Right. Yeah. One good thing with the changes file is that we can we have free to add x dash things, so we can experiment without asking many more people, which is good. Try that first. Otherwise, we need to change that. So that was one one good thing. Um, <coughs> you cannot currently get at the changes by publicly, right? 
But we need, no, we need, we so need that. that needs to be fixed. What In many cases, we need to change back to get the changes file count. What are we to do? What are we to do? What are we to do? My tech would be all installed packages in the version. That's the easiest way. All installed packages. I, I believe, no, I believe the edge code info is actually smarter and maybe it's just about reusing the code. It, it's all the build depends and the dependencies. And build central? Maybe. Because you know you have a build, what do you have a build using uh, well, That's mostly meant for ignoring things that, uh, where some way. code from that other package gets, in, gets copied in and then that's the, 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 the source of the other package. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, my understanding is that we don't want to use that because no. yeah. it was meant as a, to catch packages in the archives. And yeah. So yeah, we would, yeah, we would, we would do that. That would blow up the size <laughs> of the archive. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you would want to list every package because you might have something that's essential or build essential, like a compiler yeah. that changes the applet. And you want to but build essential. Change. The problem is that if, if um, Maintainers are not building the package in a in a shoot, then <laughs> it's a privacy issue. Then they should send you the shoot. Stop. 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 Well, <laughs> hold on. I mean, this is going to be in the changes file, right? Mm -hmm. And it, well, if you just build the source file, it won't show up anywhere. But maintainers build binary packages on their personal machines. Sure, but, but they should not yeah. be uploading. Yeah. Yeah. They should be uploading the source. <laughs> So do, do we have to move to source only packages before we can do that? Is that no, no, it's not a before thing. It's that if you don't want to leak information <laughs> out on your machine, quit uploading packages that you built on your local machine. And just yeah. upload the source. If you need to build the you need to build the source file. Build the source file. Yeah. Now, if we're going to do the the whole uh, verification stuff, the developer needs to upload the changes file with the hashes of the devs. So I'm getting back to, uh, yeah, maybe not everybody. Some people are not at the top, right? Yeah, so the idea, one of the uh, end idea was that you would have the .dev in the changes file, but you would not upload the .dev because uh, after the upload, a buildy will pick the changes Start the rebuilding process, and if the resulting dot dev matches what's in the dot in the changes file, then it can get accepted in the archive. Mm -hmm. So we have the expectation that not both has been compromised, and that the package can be actually rebuilt. So if we want to do that, then we need to uh, we need to be to be right in what we capture as the dependent, like the build depends that were actually used. Recursive dependencies of build essential and build defense. That would be less. That's what trouble. build info does, so I believe that's. We can try that. That's, that's <coughs> and then you avoid. You're not going to have problems with hash and stuff. You, <coughs> that, that means doing weird downgrades on the build thing, right? No. Oh. You might not even. Might, we might well fail. Yeah, if, if um, the uh, versions are different. You should probably reject packages that were built using the old version of the right? Why would you want that in the archive? Well, the ability is to not update is a build essential on a purpose, which is, for example, useful if something in build essential breaks horribly. Um, if the abilities would automatically yeah. up, uh, update, <coughs> like the package and it breaks, you can't build anything anymore. So you kind of not necessarily want to have the ability like minute up to the packages. It's a specific script we're talking about. It's a thing that would take the packages, with, like the list of packages and version, and install them from snapshot.dbm.org to reproduce the build environment. So I think I think we're jumping ahead of ourselves if we think we're going to change the way that the archive itself is going to operate. Like to not allow an upload to go through unless it's reproducible. I think the first thing is get the upload to be reproducible. Yeah. yeah. And and okay, fine. The build these may not have the same thing, and they may produce something different. But get the upload, get the build to be reproducible, and don't worry about dealing with like 
setting it up as a as a as a gating factor for the for the archive. So I think that that suggests that it just it's you know it's a list that ships either in the dot changes file um, or it's a separate file or it's in the dot dev. So you mentioned snapshot. One thing that would reduce the size of the list is to start with a timestamp if we know that the build environment is up to date and do by reference to snapshot. I don't know what the date is. Yeah. Uh, the release file has a time. You can no, no, what up to date it means responding to the archive. No. Because, yeah. I mean, the different different oh, things yeah. are in for different architectures at different times. And Let's worry about optimizations of the verification. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> So I'm, 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 I'm trying to think what are the advantages of having a separate file, and, and it's hard for me to find. I don't know. I mean, if we want to be to, this to be working, we also need the build D. When they first pick the build for another architecture as the uh, uh, DD of build architecture, they also need to uh, record the build environment for that architecture. Uh, you know? And so it feels to me that how packages get in the archive. You know, it's always a bad change as well. So that's, I don't know, it's, 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 that feels like the most easiest way to me, because the other way is you do a um, source-only upload. And then, then you have a change as well that would not have these informations. It would be a differently named change as well, because it's mm. underscore source. It's yeah. Maybe and it's like the multi multiple architectures in one thing as well as well. So ah. Yes. Ah. So <coughs> that's is. in that case you have multi you might have multiple versions of different packages right here. Okay, so we need a separate file. That's that's the reason. Relatedly what about arch all stuff? Arch independent stuff? Uh, they need to know what architecture they were built on. Presumably. So if, you're, if you're building an arch all, do arch all your changes, your changes file is still underscore. Okay, yeah, yeah. Underscore yeah. Underscore yeah. Okay. Which is also no, that's also interesting because if you're doing a, uh, huh, should you be able to build the same thing across different you arches? For arch all too, but I have seen, I'm aware of, and I've done memories of things where it yeah, makes a binary right. format. Which is fine, but the binary format is specified to be either a little Indian or big Indian, yeah. Yeah. and you detected it when you load the file, which one it came in on. I'm, I don't remember. Maybe. I think, we, I think, we, I think, I think we fixed get text. Do we consider that as a, re a bug from the point of view of reproducibility? If it's an arch all, yes. Yeah, like arch all, arch, arch all packages should be reproducible across architectures. Yeah. There's some weird stuff like mm -hmm. M test or something where it loads on it. Marked all package that has binaries in it. Yep. Yeah, lots of a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah. Just, but that's that's I, just okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I'd want to see what the mind. output of running this on the whole tree is for arch all things and see if they're non deterministic and they in are. which ways they fail. I would like to be slightly all the world of X and say if it's not reproducible on different architectures, but the thing in the archive is a thing that builds on I386 or AMD64, that's okay for now. In the future, we can fix that, but it shouldn't be considered, it shouldn't be considered preventing us from getting the goal of reproducible builds. If, 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 we, can, if we can get that 64% yeah. from this, yeah. that would be awesome. Okay, so, <laughs> so let's, can we agree that it should be, so it should be a separate file that is referenced in the changes, that is kept in the archive, and that contains the Architecture in the final name, except for our old packages. Does that separate file need to be signed? It's, it's the referenced in the changes. The changes file is signed. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Uh, where is that? Um, I know DKG said not to get ahead of ourselves and talk about the buildies, but uh, the buildies only build uh, packages for their particular architecture, and then how do uh, binary independent packages to build. Well, the particular build that does it, like, even if it's or something, or just the first. Right, arch independent ones are built by the by the developer right now. And the, the, oh. This is one of the issues about, about the source of the base, is that 
form this. <laughs> I, I haven't followed the whole conversation, but uh, I, I wonder why that file isn't simply in the dot dev, like in, in one, of, one of the because it's files. Because when I have dpkg and dpkg dash dev and dpkg dash dpg and dpkg dash, mm. then it will be duplicated. But the change log is already duplicated. The copyright's already duplicated. Yeah, that's more than enough to do. <laughs> is it useful to have it in the delivered package on the system as opposed to just? Yeah, actually. Yeah. Oh, there's a problem. No, it's useful if you were fetching the source code. Yeah. Right? It's not useful if you've got it on your okay. It's useful when you're touching the source code. So it, 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 it should ship with the source code no. if you're going to ship it. I know why. But yeah, it's the, the, yeah, yeah, the reason why you should not be in the dot dev is because there's no reason that you told me to fetch the dot dev while I'm trying to actually reproduce it. <laughs> yeah. Because it saves, it saves me dollars and, 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 yeah. and bandwidth. Because that, that can only be bad. <laughs> and conversely, if yeah, you're changing the dot dev by putting some code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it's metadata or about yeah. the depth. Okay. Okay. Separate file. Separate file. So basically, I believe the plan for that would be tech th build info. Chuck it as uh, file. So it's going to be a dot build and, info. And move it to dpg as a batch to dpg and create the file as a build file. So it's going to be hello underscore. 2.9, what did I have? 2.9, 3.1, 3.12-1, underscore, AMD64, dot build info. Why not? Is there anything else that is code in the book? No? And is that signed by the developer who initially uploaded it? Probably is. That's part of the dot change as well. Probably is here to reference the dot change. Like, it checks the dot change. It will check some. That's good. The change is valid. Probably checks some of that building. The problem here is you have multiple builders and they may have skew in the build info. Like they will have different versions of GCC or but it still may be reproducible. <coughs> that's, that's fine. Is that, okay. is that too much? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Well. No, I think one file and you reproduce the environment of that file. I mean it's the, the like archive the gets one copy. Yeah. It came exactly. from some build bin. That's the one. At some point archive time, gets one copy from Right, and then each build that gives the archive is one. And this so we're trying to match what the developer did, and the developer might yeah. then use from the developer. I'm not even talking about That's matching the developer, I'm talking about the buildies that the developer didn't have. So if you want to reproduce, you need, you need to be able to say, yeah. does this match the power, how it was built on PowerPC? And that needs to be available so that you can pull that and reinstall the same package on PowerPC. Just to make sure I understand, this is per binary package? It's yeah, per source, source package, package source. per architecture. Per source build. For build. So hypothetically, but, but, yeah. you could have, uh, I think it's technically possible to run it, to have the MD64 build the build the first two art dependent packages, and then in a separate build the run build the second two. I don't think <coughs> we don't actually do that. But okay, so like, Al it's, a, it's a source package that builds four binaries. Yeah. And Alice builds binary one and two, and Bob builds binary three and four, and the archive wants to mix those two? Okay. I think there's nothing in the machinery that stops it at the moment. And so well, we, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm fine with that answer. I that is. Say that. You're saying there's no yeah, work to do. Is it, right? is it possible to start with mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. it's possible. I, I I there's an arch all value package <coughs> with an arch something else in the same source. I mean, they, those could be. Well, our job is. Ah, that's right. But you can. Uh, yeah, okay, so you can at the moment, and I do build the arch independent only with. I will upload only the arch independent binaries from for the next. Uh, and so what will the building be for? That we do we have to put all. So maybe we need to have a yeah. dash uh, underscore in depth and underscore R. Instead of No, no, this is all. This no, on top of that. Hold on, this oh. doesn't reference the. This refers to where it was built, not yeah. the, not that, the fact that it's an AMD. And there'll be two. And there'll be two builds. There'll be one build on one with on, 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 on,
Right. There's no no then the lambs as well if the L and the Super Bowl as they that and seems like that would for already be a problem for the changes of field depends on those field depends in the dead line. Because my change file is always called multi field changes. And you've never been smart at FTP master, now you can the name of the changes, but you can upload the uh, exactly yes. same name changes files but multiple times. We want, we want to keep the changes files forever now. We're not doing that right now. And so if we have changes files that collide on names, that's well, already <laughs> a problem. Then if we have a separate file, there's no reason to keep the changes files indefinitely. So uh, apart from the uh, signature, maybe. But we don't need that for binary packages right now, so why would we not further build it for? So, okay, so potentially, if you're doing a build of, if you're doing a build that includes the yeah. other packages, then you may have something that's all got filled in with that. Room. And so, if you're building both Arch and and you get two double files. So, they need to have different names granted. Can we just put a timestamp here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get rid of that. <laughs> it would, no, it would be not, not all. Hmm? Huh. <laughs> so, so, here's, so this is, this is the idea that I think I'm hearing, and yeah. maybe, I, maybe I'm not getting it. But when you do a build, you are producing some architecture independent packages, which are, um, and then some architecture dependent packages. And in say I just do a build locally and I build both of those, then these two files will be identical. Yeah. Right? And then the archive is going to take the architecture independent packages from one or the other of the builds that come through and they will take that underscore all dot build info and ship it over there. Um, yeah. Do you say from the build D or from the developer? I don't care which one they choose. They're going to choose <laughs> that. Great, great, great. And then the architecture <laughs> independent well, packages. They're not independent the architecture independent packages. They're not independent the architecture independent So then they won't be present in the stuff I've loaded having built the. And this not present. Right. But then, I'm, saying future, this, I'm saying this not building. And in the future, there will be one, one built in will be not actually to do that. Right. Okay. So, you can have the same kind of category of problem with the developer. Like, I think it's true you can have the same category of problem with the developer. Just removes one out of the two, let's say, binary packages you uploaded. The <coughs> don't do that. <laughs> Seriously, like, we don't need to worry about that case. I really think yeah. we just, the developers shouldn't be doing that. I, I would choose the name to be underscore name. Maybe that's not that. Well, that's, yeah. that's really yeah. confusing. Because like, any everywhere else means every. <laughs> Dependent architecture. Okay. <laughs> if you want to call it in depth, that might be okay. <coughs> yeah. Just make it a star. Yeah, but the problem is that. Total <laughs> 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 so star. So we're calling it. The problem is that's where we're not. Cross compilation? Mm. Cross compilation? You know what? Oh, that's that's possible. Possible. That <laughs> no, no, that's okay. That's the destination. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's, let's, it's, let's not try to do cross compilation. That's what I'm saying. The building should include the uh, the architecture. Right. The content of this file should include the build, the host architecture, yeah. as well as the target architecture. And we, uh, well, well, well it's yes. supposed to build. It should include the architecture of each sorry. package yes. that is recorded. Yeah, yeah. It, it actually does right now. The, I, I think the uh, building for that, the DH building for we call the, I should check. <coughs> cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the thing onto this topic and then maybe about it, which is, uh, the reason I suggested this is just that I think it's actually cleaner if there's one building for a file per dev. That's really my point. Per dev? Per binary dev, yeah. Okay. Why? Uh, but the, but the thing is, the bar isn't per dev, it's per build. It's per sure. time you build. Sure. I guess I'm just saying, you know, the real promise is about the relationship between builds and devs, and I'm also fine with control D. But, but it, it doesn't, how would you interpret multiple build info? One per dev, I don't understand. Well, I want. It's going to be the same build info for all of the devs that are built at one time. The question is whether you're trying to reproduce builds or whether you're trying to reproduce devs. 
funds you or build. If you're reproduced build, you reproduce that. Yeah. So yeah. I have a plausible, I think, interpretation of where you're going with this, which is we're getting build info files from somewhere. We need to be able to download them. Uh, they need to be tracked by the archive. They need to be re-signed by the archive because we're not uh, relying on changes files for this. So we need some sort of pack system like the packages file for build info files. So you might have a you know, build info style file that has each dev and then has like a stanza for each dev and then the name of the associated build info for it. But, but given a dev, you know yes. what its source code is. Yeah. Yes. Right? You can't, you know, hello tools comes from the hello source yes. file. Yeah. And so you figure out what the source file is. And that's the build info that you fetch. And it just has the information about what was used to the, for the build. That's it. When I <coughs> am a client of this, so I'm not DAC, I'm a client, yep. and I yep. want to reproduce the build on my desktop for my own assurance that that the yep. build are going to do something, and I download the build info file, how do I do that? You, you need to download the source anyways. Okay. So you're going to the, like, the source stanza in your releases? And so the, that fetches the DSC, the original part of the user. Sure. The, the build info. The, the, and, that that the the, and the build info. Because oh, which all those was a source. DSC. Is there all source specific? Oh, it's in the TSC. No, no, no it can't be. Not the not the so how, what is what is the mechanism whereby? Deck. Okay. No. Magic deck. Magic deck. That's the. So wait, wait, wait well, I'm, I'm not I'm not hearing your question. If I run the app get source, yeah. How does app get source know where to where to literally download like what HTTP URL to download the, the build info file from? It doesn't know which dot to add that you want to try to produce. Right. It just really has to download. It doesn't even, it almost doesn't even know what architecture I'm it knows, on. It knows the architecture that you're on, so it's going to guess yeah. that. Okay. Just like app get download fetches the oh, version sure. for the architecture that you're on. And then if the package has some architecture independent events, it will also fetch the underscore all. Is it verifying any signatures or cryptographic hashes when it downloads the build file? Via the app archive chain, right? There's yeah. a tree in the app. So in the no, sources. No, no, no. <laughs> in the sources. Also, no, for also for the sources. But that's new. You read your time about where But it's not going to source. It's neither a dev nor a DSC. Is there some file that something? No, something uh, the app archive contains a bunch of this information. Okay. And if it doesn't contain it, for we, what we want, we'll make sure that, okay. that it gets okay. into well, it. So maybe some, well, okay. So maybe <coughs> my initial idea, which was make the dot changes the high vote thing. Uh, that actually you get and you know call the uh, p builder dash reproduce thing on. Maybe it needs to be this build info. Maybe we need to make sure that all the info is in this build info, and maybe we need to make this build info sign. In that case, because what I was thinking, but when I said, "Huh, we take the dot changes file," is that dot changes were already signed. But if this is referenced by the changes file. Well, as a file is I as a client can't get to the changes file, or should right, I? Right now, no, I see what you're saying. But, uh, but if we if we are going to change that to add uh, the recovery file, mm -hmm. given I, I didn't knew that actually you could upload changes file with multiple times yeah, the same yeah. name, uh, and that's a kind of problem that actually I'd rather not uh, open because that's breaking things. So let's make something new. Yeah. Maybe that's a better path. So we could stick the signature in the build info, but it seems to me like if there is a dot changes file associated with every built package in the archive, then those dot changes files should be. Uh, I mean, the source package well, is still wait. signed, and you want to like, kind of also check uh, what the archive does. Maybe and if you're doing your producing builds, yeah. But also, one other reason is sponsoring. I hadn't thought of that before, but now it's clear. Sponsoring. <coughs> When you sponsor a package, what you sign is the dot changes file. Yeah. But and I want here. I want to see, like to verify the signature of the uh, of the, the actual developer and not the sponsor. I mean, if mm -hmm. you're getting the dev, you verify the signature of the archive. So that's why I was saying one answer is the archive signs some metadata for all of the build infos. You don't know which developer signed. Yeah, sure. Time. That's why I say we we include either as the detached signature or inline signature in the build info. The signature yeah. that is of the developer that actually built the thing. But if the dot uh, changes files are being shipped, the dot changes file might be signed by a sponsor and not by the developer. But but, but in that case, then the building <coughs> came from the sponsor. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. What? Wait, 
I you, you sponsor packages. If somebody just mails you a .dev and you uh, no, you can reproduce some. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you reproduce. No, but if I'm sponsoring a package, yeah. I look at the source code and I and build I it and I upload it. the thing that yeah, I yeah, built. I'm not going to take an arbitrary set of code. Right. Yeah, but somebody's just really looking at the source code. No, I want to make sure that. Yeah, well, we don't know if it is. Yeah. I'm I'm it. Yeah, I did that. They rebuild it. I did the same thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I really don't think I want it. I don't want the build info to be signed by the person <coughs> whose binaries are not being uploaded. But if it's reproducible, then you are. This is a bit wise say. Well, whether we're not build there, yeah. 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 No. What's that? You'd still upload yours and not theirs, even if it is reproducible. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. right. No. If yeah. it's exactly the same build info, you can just replace the signature. Yeah. If, if it's the same dev, it doesn't matter. If it's not the same dev, you want the one that goes in the archive. Therefore, you should be using the build info from the person who did the final upload, not from the original. Exactly. Is right. that logical? That, that's, yeah, that's logical. But, it, but it assumes that the best practice is to rebuild what you sponsor. Yes. One of the great <laughs> which doesn't <laughs> do that again. One of the so one of the amazing. So one of the amazing thing that that I've seen with the Tor Brother being reproducible that we take a, a machine that we have nil trust on it, we build the fucking tall brother we take ages to build. Yes. It, it generates a gigabyte of archives for all architectures. It's super long to upload to the actual server. But, and then it doesn't matter because I can take my own laptop, which is on, you know, broadband, like, no, cell, cell phone on a train, because I only have to upload one file to the server to make it true, which is a signature of the SHA-256 uh, file. It's the only file I have to upload. So I'm actually arguing that uh, it's, it, I shouldn't have to, as a sponsor, maybe I shouldn't have to uh, have to upload the .dev file mm. at all. We are going so. forward. We're, we're trying to get to uh, binary less uploads. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I see your point. So I, I, I don't see why that changes. Yeah. I, well, you don't need to rebuild. The, the point is that you don't need to rebuild the top dev. Well, yeah, you, know, you, you, you always do it. You do because off. you need to make sure if you're sponsoring a package that that thing builds in a clean environment because you're, the person you're sponsoring the package <laughs> for may not have built it in a clean environment, for example. But, but I believe the signature on the building code should be from the person that actually made the first build. But maybe it's a, it's a, it's a, maybe you're not here. I don't know. I think yeah, it's, I think you are identical, does it matter? Well, it tells you who, well, that's one thing. I mean, uh, right now it's super hard to know. Uh, we don't have that information right now in the archive. Who built the package? But, um, but so here's, here's a plausible scenario I'm thinking, uh, which is, if I, if the archive is better at minimizing the build info or getting more sane, more reproducible build info. So the thing is that the build info might vary while the dev doesn't. And there's some build info that might be more reproducible because it's cleanly from snapshot as opposed to some packages upgraded, some packages not. And maybe the resulting devs for both of these are identical. I would want to prefer the one that is more standardized because that's easier for a third party to reproduce. So but again, this is this is once the rest of the archive is already there. Okay, right? Let's move on. So let's not. Yes, let's let's uh, get it, let's get to the sixty-five percent. I have a presentation question about DH. Uh, clean this stuff up to remove the date stamp. Can we address that later? Okay. Let's, let's try to get the environment you know settled. So, so I don't I don't think we need the build info to be signed. I, I still have not heard a, an argument for why the build info on its own needs to be signed, given that the dot changes files are going to be present. And well, be that's my thing. I, I'm saying let's not make the dot changes present. Let's keep exactly that walking as it is right now. And so we are missing a piece of information, and that's that's the. the but 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 DAC is not going to redistribute these dot these but the dot build info files without a change either, right? No, but. Uh, the, <laughs> The fact that right now there is no uh, without changes file, there's no naming scheme that is mandatory, I think is a painful thing to handle. Oh, because of the multi. So you won't necessarily know which dot changes to get because it could be underscore m64 dot changes or it could be underscore multi dot changes. 
or you could reuse the same changes file name, and you can't have yeah, both of those changes files in the archive because they have the same name. Yes. There's no way to make an after archive that contains two files with exactly the same name. No, but the but the dot changes file has the arch in it. No, but I could reuse the entire name because I could do the same upload for the arch twice. Same upload, same arch twice. And the archives but the archives only take packages from one of those uploads, so it's only going to produce one. But the changes file for the Arch independent packages also has the build Arch in them. So it actually is happening that you have two changes files with exactly the same name. One that contains the Arch independent packages and one that contains the Arch dependent packages. Okay. Yeah, so the names are thrown away at the moment, I think. So we have to reach them in and then produce Well, it doesn't start with changes. So, so I, 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 if, if we're talking about what that needs to reproduce, yeah. right? Then the stuff that comes from the buildings that built the <coughs> arch-dependent packages, regu regularized names, yes. And no. the stuff that comes from from the original uploader will have whatever wacky name the original uploader wanted to put on it, and that's where the and that's where the arch-independent packages are going. Info is going to come from. Correct. But I believe it's, it's just cleaner to view the dot changes file as a transactional thing. Yeah. It's a transaction with your fee and it should maybe stay that way. A transaction with the archive. Yeah, I'm going to change you. It's, it's transactional. So and the building for are something that stays until uh, the package gets removed. I agree with you in principle that, that such a system would be nicer. But I think that given that there are other groups who want to do certain things with changes files, it's going to be harder to build a stable, reproducible build system on the assumption that changes file follow certain rules than it is on the assumption that build info files follow certain rules. And therefore, we should prefer the easier option if there are no clear downsides. Okay. I think that's roughly your argument. Okay. I buy that. Thanks. Um, so, signature on the build. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Because we would be able to trust that thing, right? I have a hilarious joke that we don't really you can just build it and then the fact that we're we'll working on and that's your thing. But but it so, so we know we know we need to ask to that to not throw away the dot changes file, right? That's a separate yes. asset. We, we, we don't know if we need that. Okay, okay. So so that, needs to, thing. that needs to distribute. Wow. I love you people, I feel we're making progress. <laughs> yeah, we'll um, to avoid changing semantics of. And so I mean yes. the so the build info becomes part of the of the list of files in, in the dot file. Okay, inside of the result, who signs the build info file? Whoever does the build. Yeah. That's up to What's that? Yeah, it. <laughs> right? It goes yeah. with, with Cool. So we know how we uh, replacing the environment, the hardest part, the hardest part from the from the test we had so far. One thing I worry is that we might discover something else that is part of the environment that we don't know now it needs to be recorded as part of the environment. Stuff that is the build info it needs to be an extensive right. format. That, that's what I'm getting at. So we need to define the build info format so that you can extend things and for packages that don't care about the extension or reproducible without the extension, you don't break the tools. Yeah. Could you, uh, do you want you want us to you want us to look at uh, the build info what what the Azure build info produces right now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you, I'm sure you have worked some file on your on your file system. I have. Do you have? No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> have, have looking? What? Do you have looking? Uh, probably not. What are you looking for? A build info. It's there are in in uh, yes, USA. Uh, a package in the chain logs. Um, I forgot. I called. Build info something more architectures. So yeah, all, all, all Haskell packages have, have that. No. I believe that central. That's not super ma ma machine to say. That can be doesn't contain architecture. The file has closure. Is any is any machine? I don't I think, think so. So then it doesn't. So yeah, but yeah. So it's just, what's that? Or that changes for the same as the changes file. Yeah. But so what's the data? Packages and version. Packages, essential packages closure. Build essential package or closure.
Declared arch in-depth build dependencies, build dependencies, arch dependent build dependencies. So it's missing the it. architecture so of the. No, it's no, you can have. I, I can do my build with uh, a three axis and a and a and sixty four. It's missing the architecture of the <coughs> of the build environment. Back. Yeah. yeah. Those packages. Yeah. Yeah. Package 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 yeah. yeah. It's just a so column so dash. Yeah, it's all. Yeah. Is the is the IP sixty four to those? Yeah, yeah, like the GHC. Let me have all. Why? Let me have Pearl zero. Oh, the let me have zero. Yeah. So so we're looking for what a colon different. Yeah, yeah, it's Right. So, so what is that specifically then? We need part of the PKG build package. Build info needs to record. Yeah. Post. Is that right? Yeah. The architecture of multi arch packages. Um, Post architecture of the tool chain. Of every package is mentioned. Yeah. 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 Uh, we can recall the kernel version if we want. I've, <laughs> I've, some yeah, people told me that they had varying behavior. I mean, you I'm not sure that because you can have to, you can talk to some configure scripts will try to uh, detect the case builds as a running kernel. Yeah. Side of the I'm, I'm saying this is a bug. Yes. It is a bug. Yes. But if the package, you know, captures that, but I believe it can help debugging if we know. So what? So kernel version. If the format is existent, we, we, we won't attempt to reproduce the kernel version. <laughs> but, but it will but be. This is, but this is privacy yeah. information here. Oh, the kernel version. Just yeah. is kernel major minor it's enough? Like just three thirteen versus three eleven? Is that enough? You also need to have a different There could be patches in, in, a, in a small revision that the bug fix patches. Well, so I'm not saying it's the worst. So I'm going to post the release and version strings the yes, two different things. So like you name dash r dash v. I feel like you are likely to leave the kernel for another way. Let, let's 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 just go back here yeah. and then argue about right there. Okay. Oh. So I know what gets captured, but I, maybe we don't want to capture this. I mean, there is like username get captured. Several, the, several of these will be in the result. That's the problem. And those shouldn't be in the result. No, they should not be. The username? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They should not be in the result. <laughs> yeah. So we, so we don't need that in the building. Right. right. Same but as the local. Yes. Well, during, during debugging, when we're trying to figure this out, <laughs> yeah, it may it actually be useful, useful to have these, these yeah, I thought we were enumerating all the things and then decided. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's when we're, <laughs> we're at home. Let, let me make one more point, which is that if this is an extensible oh. format, Listing something here now and including it in build infos now does not commit us to including it in build infos forever. If we get to the point where the kernel version or the username no longer matters, we can stop including in build infos. Yeah. We can also have it be a default that is not included, but people who are okay with including it you know, can start including. My username is my email address, which is on the package. Sure. I don't care. Others might, but I don't care. So we should <coughs> favor specifying the things we think are important and then come back well, and decide. You, you should have deployed the building as either or uh, yeah. as no, whatever. As still uses, uses the same username as by default. As well uses my username. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So, so what else? Um, so you need to use it. At the time of the build, yeah. Yeah. Of AD, yeah. what do you say? Unix environment? Environment variables. Yeah. Yeah, All of them, though, like CC seems relevant. But what about like FC alternatives choices? Oh, no, I'm serious. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So you want to know what my editor is? The actual shop 252 of all the binaries involved. A number of rootkits present. <laughs> Snapshot of slides. We're enumerating here. We can we can. We'll find the process. 
Last Friday, we all settled. Number of CPUs. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are all the like things that can CPU be your asked flags for? for that matter, like what CPU info basically. Oh, so, <laughs> so actually <laughs> CPU flags are going to yeah. affect the way, there's some like... CPU info is... Uh, <laughs> so... Wait, wait, so how do we deal with the film too? CPU flags uh, should be something that uh, packages to take at one time. But it But it might also influence how, how the compiler chooses to optimize things. Yeah, that's not And that's yeah. stupid. It, it needs, it, Look, if you're looking for things that are stupid at the compiler, it's going to be a fun thing. That's a fun thing. It's built for the compiler. It's built for the compiler. But all the bills, they have a configure script by two men. Yeah, it depends on how stupid the package is. There are definitely configure scripts that do that. Are truths, all truths, going to have access to the CPU? Maybe most of them. If the image building code can't get to the data, then it won't include it. Yeah. Right. This is not a require. This is not a list of re things to require. This is a list okay. of fields that. Yeah, if you don't know I would, if the comp GCC in the building can get the CPU flags, then you know. So, really, yeah. what I would love here is we, we yeah. actually yeah. stop with you just need to put CPU. Let's just start with the yeah. building. I will start with the packages and the host, uh, the architecture of the host. Yeah. And, and the if we need we to add things, we crank up the data. data. That sounds like a plan. Yep. I don't want to think about the privacy thing at all. <laughs> <laughs> we can see you. Yeah, but it's still you know, looking for 60% or something for us. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, and I, I, the, the, the <laughs> diagnosis that you did to break down the ones that weren't reproducible, yeah. some of those will suggest new things to add to the DH building code once we get into the whole archive. If we can get to the point where we've got 60% actually building reproducibly, and then we do some categorization and say, hey, this is a common feature. All right, throw some more data in the building for us and we'll run everything through it. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Uh, what's this is exciting. Um, 2018. Okay. So, uh, yeah, maybe we should we should go to an end because we're not productive. I'm not sure so what. Um, we want to enumerate tasks. That's that was my final thing, but... I have one possible thing to <coughs> so I wanted to get a sense of what the implementation quality of scripts, etc., that are part of DH stand out and all reproducible things <laughs> needs to have, and if... Uh, I have some thoughts about it as a topic. Mm -hmm. What, the quality of the one? So, what what the properties... Uh, the security sure. was? No, like... Um, so... To be very concrete, these Java doc files have an HTML comment that has a timestamp in them. Uh, it seems to me that the best way for me to handle this would be to have a like Debian slash reproducible cleanings file that says Java doc colon and then a glob expression that refers to which files to process with the DH cleaning Java doc helper, and then the DH cleaning Java doc helper can be a relatively naive. Perl script that knows that on line five there should always be this comment, the script there really is a comment, okay cool, we'll remove line five, call it day. Uh, so so we can outsource that job to your packaging helper and we don't need to specify that yet. And if your DH, you know, DH cleanup or reducibility dash dash with Java decides that it wants to specify this file, it's welcome to. If it doesn't need to, it's just can just match that. So, so, so we need to basically implement these on a plug-in basis for each one of the possible. Right. Yeah. Well, I will. I will still. I will still draw it like to draw a line uh, with this thing of the cleanup afterwards uh, idea. Mm -hmm. Is that for the AR? Mm -hmm. One of the issue we had is that okay, scripts might rely on the timestamp during the build process, so we need to clean up afterwards because otherwise we fuck the build process. But come on, comments in HTML yeah. file. This is, this is not going to fuck the blog process, right? So, yeah, yeah, but it's it's so, it's, so we we should use lib time. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying how, how I, I think we should try to favor the fact that we do not get timestamp written and you know, yeah. after a while. Yeah, I guess I preferred yeah. determinism yeah. over... Uh, I'm saying I spent two hours on that yesterday, and I'd rather really just remove I, I actually, I actually think that 
we should write, if, if there's an obvious said script to clean up a file, write the said script and throw it into strip non-determinism, right? And then it later on. Yeah, and now this stri DH strip non-determinism has a list of the things that we need to go <laughs> past your upstream about, hey, hey, we really like to not list you in the wall of shame of all of the things that produce, <laughs> you know, non-deterministic builds. So fix it and we'll, and we'll, and we'll drop you. So the preference is always going to be fix the problem, or again, at least fix the problem in Debian. But if it should it, be catalog. If it needs to be temporarily fixed, we can do so via the script, and maybe there's some things that can be permanently fixed, like the AR thing, but that's okay. So given equivalent efforts, prefer the thing which produces deterministic behavior rather than cleaning up after it. Yeah. Given limited time, do the thing which works, and then uh, coordinate with upstreams to get the preferable outcome later. Okay. That's a very good way to trade it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, tasks. Tasks. So, <laughs> so should, we, should we go back and read through what yeah. some of the tasks are? Yeah. So, um, does Joey in the Talk. Sorry? Was Joey Hurst at the talk? No, I'm just thinking about it. So, Lenore, it seems like you might be furthest along on these patches that need to be submitted. Yes, I'll, I'll, I can take care of the patches. So, is that okay? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Okay. Did we make a decision about, uh, we can, okay, we can't do that university. Yeah. Okay, so that's just a decision point. We don't need to do anything else. Uh, so who wants to start DH strip non-determinism? I'll help you. I could help too. Wow. So who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna pull, there's four volunteers. Who's PM? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Then put something there. So repository-wise, we have a repositable IOP project, and we can create the GPKG and the presentations and the MISC. Is that okay? So you can, uh, yeah, we, we can do a developer and get a branch. So uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. thanks, guys. Yeah, that's nice. So. Uh, so who wants to work with DH build info? Who's upstream for DH build info? So he, uh, he's a okay. French. He's called Yan. Okay, is he averse to changes? Well, like someone comes we in and says we're going to do actually we're not going to change the software. We're going to change GPKG. We're going to take the work he's done and <laughs> put it in GPKG. And eventually we would need his software. Probably want to coordinate with this person if we're taking over their work and stuff in the package because they're absolutely. It's yeah, we can, it, but it, I mean, he he. So I actually uh, pasted he what what the discussion. Okay. He told yeah, me he wanted to okay. get into DPKG. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> okay. So then. Um, but it sounds like it's hard to get things in DPKG. Can we use that? Well, we, we, we get it. In we can get our. I mean, we can stop by uh, using a private branch, and, and yeah. then we get. It, so. Well. Can we start by just updating DH build info? No, because you need if it's going to be a separate file that is along the dot then, then it needs to be done by DH build info runs in the middle of the Debian rules process, and so it's not going to capture it's not going to be the info in the right place. It is a two package to uh, right, why does, I mean, it, it, where, you, why does where you run in the build process determine like what your CPU flags are, yeah. and what your username no. is, and what your username is, and what packages you have installed? Because the file needs to be written outside the build process. But you run the package dev from Debian rules. It also puts it outside on the same the directory. Um, yeah, does DPAC actually changes when you run Debian rules? Yes. 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 And the other thing is the shell script that DH builder from runs can always be run at any time. It doesn't have to be called from Debian rules. So it seems to me like we have 
ample experience with a recalcitrant depackage maintainer. <laughs> we have a busy but happy to work, happy to like collaborate DH build info maintainer. It sounds to me like the easiest thing to get to where we want to go is to get what the changes we want into DH build info and then use, use a, you know, a, a package that everybody can use in the main archive. We can't stop there because build info file, even if we generate it from DH build info, do package gen, gen changes, we we'll look at it. We still have to package, <coughs> do package. Well, sure, there's a deep package changes that need to be done to make the dot, to, to stuff the dot build info into the changes, right. right? That is a minimal set of changes compared to actually making it produce all of this information in dot build info. Yeah, I'm thinking that since we're already packaged in package, why not? I mean, <laughs> okay, I mean, my impression was that every single patch is pulling teeth. Yeah, and yeah. if it's a patch that says, if this dot build info file is present, included in the dot changes, that sounds like one tooth pull. If it's with the package, then do all of this other extra shit. That sounds like a whole mouthful. I have a question also. Is it not possible for these changes files to be generated by some process that's not the package? Rawr. Mm -hmm. So we're looking, oh. we're trying to finish. Uh, so is it not possible for these to be generated by some, well, yes. <laughs> uh, well, then, OK. Uh, uh, I would agree, I mean, I would uh, RFC formats and all. Yeah. yeah. But if you'd rather, I mean, so it's not work that I'm going to tackle right now, so <coughs> I hope it's to be outside the DVD. And who wants to take on talking to the DAC folks about? Right, wait, we don't, we don't know who's going to work on those info. Yeah. So. However you will do it. Who will work on build info, be it inside the build info or the package package? There's two things, right? One thing is generation. figuring out the generation of the dot build info file and making sure that that works and defining a file format in some way that makes sense. And the other thing is including those things in the dot changes file. But that's, but that's trivial not to work. So someone volunteer to write the build info? Or write the build info thing and add in our uh, yeah. Define a format and write a script that extends, either extends or replaces the HDL info to gather all of this data or some of this data. All right. Can, can you uh, just quickly look up what, what is the code base? Like, what, what's the language for the I'm assuming it's IFIC. Yeah. Perl. Build Essential. <coughs> Perl. It's fine, they put it right there, so it's fine, put it straight, straight forward. There were four people for the other Yeah, can we yeah. Yeah. take this off? I'm not because you know, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 you don't have to do that. Oh, that I mean, maybe, I suppose I could maybe we can, like, the first step would be to mail, and you're good at that, mail, <laughs> mail <laughs> Johan to say, hey, you, you know, the maintainer of the age building oh. for, hey, do you want, like, we, we, we have the following new requirements, do you want to work on the code to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes. No one's been able to relate it to that. <laughs> so, I'm, rather than saying that you're going to make these changes, I'll say. Um, but isn't it just the first two? Yeah. Well, the, the main thing is now. make it machine readable. And it's not right. Yeah. Machine readable is accessible. Uh, so, mail. Yeah, on the back. Yeah, I don't care yeah. if do the mailing of packages. It's your own. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for someone to volunteer to mail you a question. Do you want to mail? I'll try to remember. What do you want to mail that other person? No, I'm cool. How did you do that? Yeah. 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 Do what? Is that just a place where we're having a meeting about this? It's pretty useful. Don't worry. I don't have that in my one yet. <laughs> so, this is awesome.
Yeah. One other thing, so once once we have the build info, there is this little script that, you know, puts the environment. We're, we're, yeah. Yeah, I would be interested in doing that for S-Build. I don't know if that's the tool that people want to use here. So when did I design it? Um, I believe that's the, what the build is, right? Yeah. That's the very good target. Okay. Is it the real script? Sure. Awesome. Right. What's, um, yeah. I'm sorry, what's your objective? Jeff T. Jeff T. Jeff T. Jeff T. Jeff T. There already a script for that. Thank you. There's a script that will take a list of package and version Perfect. and query snapshot okay. and give you the right snapshot to pull the page. Okay. It's just going to do it for S -port. For just, yeah. For S port? For S -build. S build. I don't know if people want it for other tools. So Fine. I don't know it, whatever tools <laughs> make you happy to make it happen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Um, you can do that. If you want to do <laughs> do, do, do we have a way of measuring our progress with all these things once we once each person has done these individual pieces, measuring what fraction of the tree is in a good shape now? I think we need a Gantt chart. <laughs> no, so I, I, I'm asking how do, how so do we I, know when to like rebuild the whole archive? And so I actually kind of think that this framework is the framework that we need in order to get to the point where we can do the rebuilds. Yeah, the rebuilds. Okay. But, uh, but I could be wrong. So if we're producing the build info and these changes to us build, take that and you know build and then just say it matches any data or it didn't, and then we're like, okay, now we're one step closer. And then okay. when you can do that for one package, and then okay, it matched it. Like, oh, now yeah. we're good for all of them. And then you know, folks like us. Lucas do, do yeah. archive-wide rebuilds, and if we can say, here's a set of tools, and if you do the archive-wide rebuild like, with these tools, we'd love to see what you come up with. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, it is actually yeah. the one doing that. <coughs> so, I think this is what we need to get that. I, I still probably, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Do, do you think it would be useful? So we kind of stopped, because I told David, okay, the talk is happen now, so we don't have time. Do you think it would still be useful to, uh, to do a rebuild with the uh, the build path uh, fixed. Yeah, I think. I think that. Wait, how are we going to get the build path fixed? Uh, it's, I have a patch for build, but that's the thing. So, it, 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 you know, we just like take what's in there, we all take what's in there. Do we need to be submitting that patch somewhere? No. Is that another to do? Well, it would be part of. Uh, no, it would be part of this. Well, yeah, maybe, but not. Just send it to BTS. It's. it's where do we start for this thing, like the, the, for the, for the We start by documenting the steps that we have. Yeah, the canonical path. Like. So if, you, if, it's a wi to if it's a wish list bug for, for S-Build, and say, then, then just put it in, put it so that when people are looking at the S-Build BTS, okay. they see that this feature is available if we want to do it. So I'm going to put that down as another one. Sorry, you, know, you wanted somebody to poke you about. What are you doing? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, okay, I'm um, sending the patch so the but I need to test this before. <laughs> Uh, what do you want to test? Yeah, yeah I'm fine with that. Just do that. Awesome. <laughs> it's it's a uh, five line patches. Great. Cool. Uh, submitted to BTS or submitted to Jeff T? What's the actual I think I'm going to BTS. Well, no, it's BTS. <laughs> well, it, need, uh, it needs to be published someplace. And if it's fine. bad, we'll get a new yeah. version and we'll publish fine. it in the same place. Yes. <laughs> well, there's the patch, don't tag it patch. <laughs> Awesome. Great. Excellent. And when, when we have done the initial rebuild, I believe we can also start having some continuous integration thing. Yeah. yeah. And we have something in tracker and, you know. Well, and, if, and uh, frankly, if we can say 60% of like Debian builds deterministically, then we could say, here is deterministic Debian. It doesn't have any sure. rest of the shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't have a kettle. Right. <laughs> uh, you'll notice that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, you always tell me what changes to make, yeah? <laughs> I, I need the, there is a couple uh, timestamps that are captured by the build process. Uh, I have icons, but I actually been getting rid of a lot of them. Um, yeah. And the, the one that was in... Uh, we didn't get the version stream. That's, that's not there. 
that what I know is that some, some people started something called Mempo, and I really tried to talk to them for ages, explaining how Debian worked, what they like to do when they were, and they had this yeah, really from uh, because I wasn't over here. There's our stuff if you want to uh, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but they use the effect time, they use uh they they expect it all over the place. Okay. And they don't have much faith in getting things into Debian and all basically. Because of the GRSEC thing. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Okay. Well, that's not just delivering the bad but, uh, What I'm saying is that the kernel is yeah. they 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 kind of made some work, but it's probably going to have to be redone. Yeah. Cool. But the the case could be a engineer. So it made some work on making the case could be a kernel reproducible. I was told the one I uploaded earlier today should be reproducible. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have a question about time frame. Uh, is there a particular time frame that they want to check in on each other, or is everyone who's participating in this subscribed? I think it's uh, it's high enough. But we can it's uh, on the very top of the wiki page, which you also should subscribe to. And uh, so and yes, we, so so I I will I will mail the list in a week or sometime after I. Go through my email backlog post.com um, and say, hey, you know, and, and I'll actually before 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 too long, I'll post these notes someplace. I mean, they'll be they'll be in the copy, but I'll put them somewhere permanent. Okay, I, I will probably update the wiki page. No one be seen to it. There is a, on the wiki page. There is a to do list, so we can also add them now. But there is the rest of the wiki page should probably be changed to reflect what we decided. About. People feel like this could be accomplished before next year. The 60% one. Yeah. Sure. That would be great. That would be great. We could like good progress. All right. The the more we can see about how fast we're moving as we go, the better we can. Yeah. I think the momentum is. helps it move faster. Yeah. yeah. We can see that. Yeah. yeah. And if so, if like we can see 60%, percent, you're like, ooh, I can nudge that line up. Yeah. 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 This patch, two more percent. Yeah. 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 I mean, I yeah, the DH, DH type Python deterministic right order of the dependence, I believe it's like 80% of all Python packages. <laughs> so a, a bonus? So, yeah. Is there anything left to do except to leave and go drink or play bubble? That's it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks a lot. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for calling us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Sorry I was late. The sushi restaurant was like a half hour slower than the other Can we can we try to bring back the show to Nolder? That would be nice for your package. No, I maintain them with different set up rows again. Uh, there are a couple of there's like one or two packages I maintain for work. Uh, was it uh, the file on the board? Yeah, maintain 